Alright, ladies and gentlemen, so as you can see, the Washington Commanders just had some news to come out. So they decided to place quarterback Carson Wentz on injury reserve. We're dealing with the finger injury. Um, I'm assuming once he stayed in LA after the surgery, uh, the team didn't get the news back that they wanted to hear. Um, because they, I'm assuming at first they didn't want to put him on IR. They wanted to just hold him on, see how he was going to heal, um, and then bring him back. But now, with him having to stay out for a uh, uh, you know, stay out for four weeks um, on injury reserve that allows him to heal, that allows him to just rest. Um, and that's good on his front now. And that's also good on Washington's front because that allows the roster space to be open. Now, I'm not sure who they're going to use that on or if they already used it with calling up Cody Hudson with resigning guys like Troy Affey to the practice squad. We'll see. But now an open roster spot is available. I see what the commanders do with that. But, yes, once again, ladies and gentlemen, Washington Commanders have placed quarterback Carson Wentz on injury reserve, and he will be out for a mandatory of four weeks. Let me just think about that in the video. Enjoy the rest of this video. Peace. YouTube, what's going on? It's Juan Gotti here with another video, and in today's video, I'm coming on here with the video where we're going to be talking about the Green Bay Packers versus the Washington Commanders as we preview their Week 7 matchup. So without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. But before we do, make sure you guys go down below, leave a like on this video, subscribe if you're new, and turn on post notifications so you get notified when I upload a video like this to the channel. Let's get straight into today's video. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a huge game for the Washington Commanders as they're coming in 2-4 and four and they have to win, okay? This is a huge game. Like, the Washington Commanders, if they want to climb back into this division race, this NFC wild card race, and I know it's still hella early to be talking about that, but if they want to climb back into this thing and make a season out of it, they have to win on Sunday because if they don't, it just doesn't seem like Washington has a chance anymore. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the Packers, they're not playing well. I understand that. But at the end of the day, it is still the Green Bay Packers. They still have Aaron Rodgers as their quarterback. So I still don't know if Washington is going to be able to stand up for that task. What do Washington have to do to beat the Green Bay Packers? One, you have to basically do what the, do what the New York Jets did last week. You have to get pressure on, on Aaron Rodgers. You have to fluster him. You have to actually get in his face. You cannot give him time to throw the ball. Because if you give him time to throw the ball, then that's where you give him trouble. That's where he can start to pick you apart. And I will say this. Even last year in Green Bay, we played the Packers well enough to win that game. But we shot ourselves in the foot. If you go back in the archives, go back to last season when I made the post-game video when we played the Packers, we played well enough to win. But we shot ourselves in the foot multiple times. The Washington Bandits cannot afford to do that. They they cannot afford to drop to, to, to two and five on the season. You know what I'm saying? Your season's pretty much done if you do that. The Washington Commanders get a win on Sunday, they're right back in the thick of things, okay? The Washington Commanders must get off to a fast start versus the Green Bay Packers. No slow starts. You got to score. You got to score early. You got to score fast. Taylor Heineke, you got to come in and take command of this offense. You know, limit the mistakes because they will make you pay. He is going to be going up against the best secondary in all of football. You know what I'm saying? So we got to limit the mistakes. If we have to lean on the run game heavily, so do it. Line, you got to open up these holes, you know. Brian Robinson and Antonio Gibson, we got to split these curries, you know what I'm saying? Get Antonio Gibson more involved, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, uh I understand they love Brian Robinson, but you got to find a way to get both of these guys involved at the same time. It's not a crime to have both of them on the field at the same time, you know what I'm saying? Um, <clears throat> as far as the Washington Commanders and the keys to victory, besides you know, getting pressure on Aaron Rodgers. You have to limit the mistakes as I just talked about. You know, Taylor Heineke, he's a guy that's going to come in and give you a, a fair shot to win. He's going to give you a fun watch. But he also can turn over the ball and make some back-crushing back turnovers. We cannot have that. Fumbling issues. We can't have that. You know what I'm saying? Drops. We cannot have that. Curtis Samuel. You cannot have a drop like you did Thursday night versus the Packers. I mean, versus the Bears. Okay? Um, Carson Wentz threw an absolute dot in the middle of the field for a touchdown. And you drop it. Can't have that. Cannot have that. This is These are mistakes that you have to take advantage of when you're playing teams like the Packers. I understand, ladies and gentlemen, the Packers have not been the Packers as of late, but they're still the Green Bay Packers. 
I do not remember the last time, if they did at all, lost three games in a row under under uh, Aaron Rodgers recently. Okay, you know what I'm saying? You 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 cannot get off to a bad start versus the Packers. This is at home. You gotta have a you got and, and I know it's probably gonna be more Packers fans there, but you have to have a way to try to give the home fans a good watch. You gotta find a way to give these guys some type of price of admission. You know, I see a lot of people feeling like this game is 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 like the Bucks game last year. I honestly don't get that feeling. I really don't. Uh be just for the simple fact that I'm not I don't think that Washington can't win this game i just more so feel like the packers aren't going to lose this game because when has the last time a grand the green bay packers have been on a three game skid i do not remember that and i just personally don't see washington winning this game i really don't uh because i just don't think Aaron Rodgers is going to allow his team to get in a three and three a three game losing streak hold now i hope i'm wrong i hope and pray that i'm wrong i hope that washington upsets the packers and we actually win this game and we make a season of it and taylor haneke is the hero but just right now i don't see it we got a lot of key guys out uh, a lot of key guys that are going to be questionable like john Bates, like Jahan dawson Deami brown is out Sam Cosme's questionable. Logan Thomas is out. We got a lot of good, a lot of a lot of guys out, but we also got a lot of depth there at, at the positions that are out right now. So, uh, it's gonna be a good game. It, it is. I definitely don't think it's gonna be a blowout or anything. But I just think Washington is gonna have opportunities to you know score and put their foot on the necks of the Packers, and they're gonna leave them around. And then Aaron Rodgers is gonna leave FedEx Field with yet another win, and he is going to probably make a late game game winning drive. To give the Washington Commanders uh, their fifth loss on the season. But, uh, yeah, I just personally, it's not that I don't think Washington can win. I just don't see the Packers losing three games in a row. You guys have to give me the benefit of the doubt for my prediction on that one. Because, like, again, when has the last time Aaron Rodgers have lost three games in a row? You know, they definitely can be ran on, you know, ran the ball on Brees Hall. Had about 100 yards last year or last game. So if Washington wants to win this game, I think we're going to lean, lean heavily on the run game this week. And I don't have no problem with it at all. If it's working, don't go away from it. Whether it's Brian Robinson, whether it's Antonio Gibson, whether it's J.D. McKissick or even Curtis Samuel. Because I swear we haven't used Curtis Samuel in the backfield much, especially handoffs. Uh, since maybe week one when he fumbled, uh, whatever. If we go, if the run in the game, if the run game is gonna be what's working and what's gonna be percolating, go for it. Next key that I have, you gotta get your playmakers early uh, involved. You know, and Ron Rivera alluded to this. He says we gotta find a way to get Terry McLaurin the ball earlier in the in the game. Now I don't know if this is Ron Rivera's first time saying this, uh, but this is the first time I heard him clearly say that, and I couldn't do nothing but be more happy about it because. We need to get Terry McLaurin the ball, okay? Terry McLaurin is the best receiver on this team, and we need to treat him as such. We treat him like he's just a regular Joe Schmo, and that's not the case here. He's one of the best receivers in football, and you see every other offensive coordinator, every other team that has no one receiver like a Terry McLaurin, they get their guys 10 targets a game. Terry McLaurin leads the game with five targets. That's, that's that's ridiculous. Guys have 10 targets in the first half. Justin Jefferson, Cooper Cup got 10 targets in the first half. And I'm not saying Terry McLaurin is Justin Jefferson or Cooper Cup. However, I'm saying Terry McLaurin needs to be used as a number one receiver. Because if he goes anywhere else, I guarantee that offensive coordinator is going to use Terry McLaurin like a number one receiver. And he's probably going to have like 1,200 yards. Next key, defense. Pressure, pressure, pressure. And I talked about that earlier. We had a flush Aaron Rodgers. Pressure. He's dealing with the right thumb injury. You know what I'm saying? I don't think it's too severe because he's going to play. But get up in his face, man. Make him scared. He can't run. You know what I'm saying? Get pressure. Montez Sweat, Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne, James Smith Williams, the uh, that FA Obata, everybody. I need to run rush as a collective unit. Continue to do what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Jack the If you want to send some pressure at him one time, go ahead and do that. You know what I'm saying? This defense has been playing well, and I don't have a I don't have a a doubt in my mind that they will continue to play well, but at the same time, you got to continue to stick what's working. You know what I'm saying? The front, the pass rush has been was was working. The front four, go ahead, front four. You gotta you gotta hold it down because you know the back end is sus a little bit. Now the one thing that's good about this Packers team, uh, uh that that uh you know that we could take advantage of is the lack of weapons. You know what I'm saying? Randall Cobb is out. You know they got Sammy Watkins more likely coming back, and that and that is a little scary, but. They have no Christian Watson, their second round draft pick. Alan Lazard, he's a guy that can really be good, but at the same time, he's not a guy that scares you. You know what I'm saying? Though they got a guy like Dobbs over there. That wide receiving core is not that good right now, okay? So they really 
aren't that scary on offense besides like Aaron Jones and Sammy Watkins. But he'll be having to come back and warm back up and stuff like that because he's been out for, I want to say, a couple weeks now uh, coming off of IR. So I definitely think Washington has a shot to win this game. I don't think they're going to, though, just for the simple fact that I think the Packers aren't going to lose. I think Washington's going to keep it close. I think Washington's going to probably have chances in, in this game to win. But at the end of the day, I don't see Washington pulling off the victory versus the Green Bay Packers just because at the end of the day, they have Aaron Rodgers. And I don't think Rodgers is going to allow his team to get to three losses in a row. Now, if it does happen... I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be, you know, super excited that we won. And I'm also going to be like, hey, man, the Packers really might be done. Like, they really might have fallen off, you know. Um, and they're really missing Devontae Adams. But I just don't see it happening right now. But I hope and pray that I'm wrong. I hope a lot of people that feels like we're going to win this game, they get they got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers feeling from last year coming off of by. I hope this is the same thing that happens. I really do. I want to believe. But I just don't know if this is going to be the same thing. But I really do hope so. But, yeah, that's what all I have today. Just a quick little preview. Make sure you guys come to the stream tomorrow for the game day live stream. Um, and also, don't forget to check out all the other videos and subscribe to the channel. And my final score prediction for this game is Green Bay wins 24-20. I just don't think Washington is going to pull it out um, just because I don't think Green Bay is going to fall to three losses in a row. But... I hope I'm wrong, and I hope Washington wins this game. But, yeah, man, it's me, Boy Juan Gotti. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the Washington Commanders. We're on the road to 5,000 subscribers. Hit that subscribe button again if you haven't already. I'm out. Peace. Uh, cost me one time. That's going to get you pop. Get you pop.